What's going on everyone? Today we've got the Red Cat Gen 8 here and in this video we're going to go through removal, disassembly, and reassembly of both the front and rear axles underneath this vehicle. Of course the first step is to remove the body. After removing the body we're going to remove the rear axle first. I find it easiest to disconnect the top shock mount first. We also need to remove the wheels and tires. The center cap simply spins off by hand, and then you need your seven millimeter nut driver to remove the wheel nut. With the shocks disconnected, we can get much easier access to the suspension mounts. Next, we're going to remove the screws holding on the lower links to the axle. Pull the lower links out of the lower link mounts. And then you can rotate the axle to get easier access to that top link screw. We can now remove the axle from the chassis. The shocks are attached to the chassis with ball studs. To remove the shocks from there, you just pry them off by kind of pushing it to the side. The hexes are not retained in any way, so you can just pull them outward to remove them. And then remove the drive pin. Next, with your 1.5 millimeter driver, remove the six screws around the outside of the portal cover. With those screws removed, you can pull out on the stub axle to remove the portal from the axle. You can remove the stub axle and lower gear by pulling outwards on the entire assembly. The lower gear simply slides off towards the outside and a drive gear is underneath. The upper bearing on the inside of the portal gear cover is another four by eight by three and the lower is a six by 12 by four. The upper centered portal gear simply pulls out and the inner axle shaft may stay attached. To remove it, simply pull out as well. The upper portal gear is centered and slides over this smaller tang on the axle shaft. To access the ring and pinion gear, we need to remove the six screws around the outside of this diff cover. In order to actually remove the ring gear from the housing, we need to also remove this portal gear cover and the top gear and axle shaft in order to be able to free this gear from coming out. To remove the pinion gear from the axle housing, we have two options. We can either remove the drive shaft by pulling out this set pin, or we can remove the screw holding on the pinion gear from this front side. I'm gonna pull off the drive shaft because I think that's probably the better way to go. If you have any problems removing the set pins from these drive shafts, make sure to heat up the set pins. During my disassembly, I've found that this vehicle used way too much Loctite from the factory and you could easily break a hex driver. So now with the drive shaft removed, you can push out on that pinion gear. I found that the ring and pinion on this axle had plenty of grease, but my portal boxes have had zero grease in them. So when reassembling, make sure and add some grease to your portal gears. Now, as I mentioned, the pinion gear here has a screw on the end of it, and you can remove that to pull this gear off of the shaft. If you ever need to do this, you're probably going to have to take another driver and put it through the shaft on the end to hold it so you can get some pressure on it. With that very small screw removed, you can then separate the actual drive gear from the pinion shaft. This is a centered gear that uses a keyed design to hold itself onto the shaft. To remove the pinion bearings, you can push the outside one from the inside and vice versa. This small seven by 11 by three millimeter bearing is the inner pinion support. The outer pinion support is a five by 10 by four. Now, if you wanna remove the outer portion of this axle housing, you need to remove the inner bearing from the portal box. And then behind that, there are three small screws that your 1.5 millimeter driver will remove. They're way back in there and they're kind of hard to see. With the three screws that are in there removed, you can then pull it apart from the housing. 
The ring gear and spool assembly is pretty simple. It uses a bearing on each side, which simply slides off. And underneath we see a machined aluminum spool and a centered ring gear. The ring gear is attached to that spool with four screws. You use your 1.5 millimeter driver to separate these. To reattach the ring gear to the spool, make sure and apply a small amount of Loctite to each of the four screws that attaches the two units together. The bearings on either side of this ring gear and spool assembly are standard 10 by 15 by four bearings. We're gonna reinstall the bearings onto each side of this ring gear and spool assembly and set it aside. Now for the reassembly. To reassemble this housing, obviously, we're just going to repeat our steps in reverse. We're going to slide the end of the axle tube into place and we're going to tighten those three screws. Then we're going to take our pinion gear portion and put it back onto the input shaft. Using a small amount of Loctite on the screw, we're going to replace it down the center of the pinion shaft. Then we're gonna take this seven by 11 by three bearing and put it onto the pinion gear. And we're going to put the pinion gear with the bearing back into the housing. Replace the five by 10 onto the outer portion of the pinion gear and then drop the ring gear assembly into the axle housing. Next, I'm gonna replace the diff cover. Next, we're gonna take the rear inner axle shafts. Make sure and note that these are drastically different lengths. We're gonna start with the long side first. You can compare this by looking at the housing and seeing that the one side is much longer than the other. You can slide the shaft into place. We can do the same with the other rear shaft. Make sure that the six by 10 by three bearing is put into place on the top side of this axle housing. It's easiest to install that bearing by putting it onto the upper portal gear first and then assembling those two pieces at once. Make sure to confirm that the four by eight by three bearing is on the inside of the lower portal box and then reinstall the outer portal box with the lower gear and output shaft in place. With the portal boxes reconstructed on each side, make sure to replace the drive pin on the stub axle first and then replace the 12 millimeter hex. We need to reinstall the drive shaft onto the pinion output. Place the drive shaft onto the pinion shaft and use a small amount of Loctite on the set pin when reinstalling it in through the drive shaft. We need to press the shock end back onto the ball stud on this axle as well. Make sure to note that there's a larger side and a smaller side to the rod end. You need to press it on from the larger side. Now we can reinstall the axle back into the chassis. We're going to start by reinstalling the upper links first while we have easy access to them. The long screw that we removed goes through one link first, then through the axle housing back through the other link and finally with a lock nut. Next, we need to reattach the drive shaft. Try and line up the yoke on this side with the yoke on the receiving side as best as possible to keep your drive shafts in phase. These drive shafts don't perfectly line up, so as good as you can get is gonna be close enough. Then move your lower links into position and reattach the screws that hold them in place. Once those are done, we need to flip the vehicle back over and reattach the upper shock mount onto the shock tower. And the last step, of course, is going to be reinstalling the tires. Make sure that you note that these are directional, so there is a left and a right. Next, for the front axle, we're not actually going to completely tear it down like the rear. Almost everything about this axle is just like the rear, except the outer portion of it. So we're going to remove it, and we're just going to do the outer portion. We're not going to get into the center section of this axle. So again, we're going to start by removing the wheels and tires and the upper shock mounts. Next, we need to remove the pan hard link from the axle. This is the link that goes from the chassis to the axle on the passenger side. It goes onto a ball stud, so you'll need to pop it off. I'm going to use a set of needle nose pliers. With that free, I'm going to remove the drag link from the servo here at the tie rod. Then we need to remove the upper and lower link mount screws. Now with the axle removed from the chassis, I'm going to remove the screw that holds the tie rod to the knuckle. I'm then going to remove the two kingpin screws that hold the portal to the inner C-hub. With those two screws removed, you can pull the portal box and inner axle shaft out as one piece. The inner C-hub of the axle uses a top hat style knuckle bushing. You'll need to pull those out of place if you plan to replace this piece. And three screws hold this inner C-hub to the center section of the axle. 
The C-Hub also has the shock mount. Again, that's on a ball stud. If you want to remove it, you just simply kind of pry it to the side. The portal box uses the same cover for both the front and rear axles. So we can remove the six screws from the outside to see what's inside. Inside, we'll see the same gear arrangement that we saw from the rear. The outside portion of the portal box is the exact same. It's the same lower gear, stub axle, and hex assembly. So we're not gonna cover that. The inner portion of the portal box consists of the steering arm and kingpin mounts. To remove the upper gear on this part, you need to remove the three screws on the back side of the knuckle. The upper portal gear actually consists of the inside portion of the CVD joint that you have for the axle. Once removed, you can see the entire unit. The bearing will simply slide off and underneath of it, you will see the pin for the CV joint. You can simply push on it to remove the pin completely and that will separate the portal gear from the inner portion of the CV shaft. Inside of that CV shaft, there's also a rotation barrel. If for any reason that you need to remove it, it simply pushes out. Like the rear axle shafts, there's two different lakes of front CVD shafts. So if you need to replace one, you need to make sure that you have the correct length. To put this assembly back together, take the inner shaft and slide that rotation barrel into place. Rotate the barrel until you can see the through pinhole and then take the upper portal gear and line up the hole on the gear with that hole of the rotation barrel. And then slide the pin through those holes and then take that 12 by 18 by four millimeter bearing and slide it over that gear and pin assembly. Now you can take that, drop it into the backside of the portal knuckle, and then you need to replace the three screws to retain the bearing in place. With the upper portal gear and bearing in place, reassemble the two halves of the portal box. We need to reinstall the C-hub back onto the axle housing and replace the three screws that retain it. Then replace the two knuckle bushings into the C-hub. Make sure that they go in from the inside towards the out. Slide the inner axle shaft into the axle housing. You'll likely need to rotate the axle shaft until it lines up with the slots on the locker. Once you have that in place, replace the two kingpin screws. Press the shock back onto the ball stud. Put the tie rod back into position. And then we need to reinstall this back into the chassis. I'm going to start by pressing the pan hard back onto the ball stud. Then I'm going to replace the upper link screw, followed by the drive shaft and then the two lower link screws. Lastly, reattach the steering, wheels, tires, and body. And lastly, reinstall the body. And that wraps up how to disassemble and reassemble the axles on the Red Cat Gen 8. Make sure and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.